We're going to look at the differences between FreeCAD's clone and link tools in this video. Stick around. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm here to help you learn FreeCAD so you can design the things that you've imagined. A viewer asked what the differences between the clone and the link tools were. Let's find out. We'll start with the clone tool first. I'm using FreeCAD version 0.19 built on the 15th of April 2021 for this demonstration and I'm running it on Kubuntu Linux version 20.04 LTS. The clone tool is part of FreeCAD's part design workbench and is used to create an exact replica of a body or part of a body within the model. When you create a clone, it's placed over the top of the original and you need to use the transform tool in order to move it. You cannot modify the clone, so you have to modify the original and the clone updates accordingly. Let's show how this works. So I'm going to create a simple body that we can use for the entire demonstration. So we'll create the body, create the sketch, put it on the XY plane. It's just going to be a rectangle with a couple of holes in it. I'm not going to bother constraining it because for the sake of this demonstration it doesn't really matter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pad it out to, oh, not a pocket, we're going to pad it out to be 10 mil. Then we're going to come across to the combo view and we're going to rename that body to be original. Let's zoom out a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to clone the whole body. So we make sure that the body is the active body and then we click the clone tool. As you can see in the combo view, we have the original body and we also have a second body called body one, which I'm going to rename to be clone body one. And you can't see it on the screen, then that's because it's simply overlaid on top of the original. So I'm going to right click on clone body one and use the transform tool. And I'm just going to move it out a bit, make it different and click OK, fit the screen. So you can see we have two bodies that are the same, different colors in this case, just simply because I've got FreeCAD set up to use random colors for parts. Now, if we then come back to the original, which is the purple one, and we make some modifications to it, you'll see that they flow straight through into the clone. So to do this, and avoid the topological naming problem. For more information on the topological problem, see my video that's linked up in the top right corner. So create a datum plane, and we're just going to detach it from that face, and then we'll create a sketch on that, and simply just place, oh, let's go with a hexagon, and we will use a pocket and pocket that the whole way through. And as you can see, even though it's just started and it's not complete yet, it's showing up in the clone as well. So we'll change the type to be through all and click OK. And you can see the clone has updated as well. And we'll hide the datum plane. Now please note I use datum plane and datum plane in interchangeably. So if I say one or the other, it means the same thing. Now, the other thing you do with a clone is that you can clone up to a point in the body and then it doesn't clone any further. So let's go with the pocket and we'll start cloning at the pocket. So we select the pocket in the original and then we click the clone tool. Again, you'll see that it is on top of the original. I'm just gonna rename that. We're gonna call it clone feature pocket one and I'm going to transform that just out of the way so that we can see the original as well. Like so, fit it to the screen. This particular clone is not a clone of the full body. If I go back to the original body and add some new features to it, the second clone will not show those features. So let me show you what I mean. Again, we will create a datum plane and detach it. And on top of this plane, we'll create another sketch. 
and I'll just put another rectangle on and I'm going to pad that out. Now, as you can see, I've added the feature on the original. The feature is shown on the first clone because that's a clone of the whole body. And it's not shown in the second clone because that was cloned at the point where we created the pocket for the hexagon. Hide the datum plane. So you can see that's how the, the clone tool works. There are a few limitations of it. You can only clone a body with a single solid. So this means you cannot clone compound solids such as part containers, part compounds and draft arrays. You cannot clone a body or a part of a body into another body. Now, I've just demonstrated this with bodies that are created in the part design workbench, but it does also work in the part workbench. So if we switch to part and we'll just create a solid or a cube, sorry. And we'll set its size to be 100 by 100 by 100. And oops. Hundred, and we will change its Y position to be 150 and its X position to be the same, just so it's way out of the way. So if I switch back to the part design workbench and then clone the cube and rename the clone. Thank you, one. And transform it away. You can see that it also works on objects created in the part workbench. Now we're going to have a brief look at the link tool. If you're interested in learning more about the link tool, I have a more complete video linked above. So like the clone tool, the link tool allows us to link to a full body or part of a body. And unlike the clone tool, it also allows us to link to an external body. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to look at how it works with bodies that are in the same model. So like the clone tool, linked bodies are created on top of the original and need to be moved using the transform tool. So let's have a look at that. So we'll select the original in the combo view and we'll click on the link tool and you can see in the combo view, we now have another one called Original 01. And you'll also notice that there is a link icon on it. So I'm just going to rename that to be Linked Original 01. And as you can see, it's sitting on top of the original. So we'll just use the Transform tool to move it out of the way. Now, one of the things you'll notice is the color is the same. And that's because inside the model, it's not actually a separate body. It's actually just a link to the original. Whereas with the clones, you can see they're all different colors. This is because they are actually different entities within the model. Now, we cannot modify the link. It will always go back to the original. So I'll just delete that datum plane for the minute. So if I was to add another feature to the original. Again, we'll just use a datum plane just to avoid the topological naming problem. Create a sketch on top of it. Select the datum plane, create a sketch, and we will just place a slot. So then we'll create a pocket using the slot and we will just make it five mil deep and turn off or hide the datum plane. So as you can see, the clone has also updated along with the link. So like the clone tool, you can also link to part of a body. So let's do that now. And we will link to this pad here. Create a link. And again, you can see that it's lying on top of the original. We'll just rename that to be link pad one and when i go to move it you'll see that i 
don't have the option to transform it. And that's because it's not an attached body. Now, what do I mean by that? If we go into the details view down the bottom, you will see that it only has a placement point. Now I talk about placement points and attachment points in my video about local and global coordinate systems and I'll link to that above as well. So the only way that you can move this linked body is to actually manipulate the placement point itself. So we have to go into the position within the placement point and then we can simply move the X and Y coordinates or Z coordinates, whichever way you want to go. So you can also see that it is the same color as the original, which means it's just a link to the original, not a, a separate object. And now if we were to place a, another feature on top of say this feature here, which we'll do, again, we'll just create a sketch on top of it. Oops, that's what I wanted it on. And we'll just create a small circle, which will represent like a chimney or something like that. So you can see that as soon as I've created that extra feature in the original, the clone has got it and also the link has got it, but the link to the partial body does not. So it works in much the same way that the clone tool does in that regard. So there you have it. The clone and link tools are very similar in nature. The clone tool clones bodies or parts of bodies that are treated as individual bodies within the model. The link tool, on the other hand, creates links to bodies or parts of bodies that are treated as the same body within the model. That's a bit of a mouthful. I've really only used the link tool in my work because I like to store common components as bodies in external models and then link them in as they're required. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. Please leave comments, questions, and topic suggestions down below. If you'd like to support the channel, you could buy me a cup of coffee through the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.